The promise of smart cities to make our cities more livable, more sustainable, more economically viable using technology has been a topic that people have been talking about for a long time. But you've got some really interesting innovations going on in smart cities specifically. And here at the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park, you've launched the Smart City Digital Hub. And you've got a platform for Internet of Things in smart cities called MindSphere. What does the, the MindSphere platform do? I think when you want to do IoT solutions, there are three parts. First, you need to connect and collect. Then you need to analyze to get the knowledge. Finally, you need to distribute the, the data as information. So in MindSphere, we provide all three parts of it in one neat operating systems. For instance, uh, IoT providers that would, they would like to know about connection of infrastructure sensors. We have a part called MindConnect, and then we have MindSphere and so on. The great beauty about the MindSphere platform is we even have a way for solution providers to develop apps that they can distribute globally. So this is what I mean by you, you have knowledge, how do you then distribute the knowledge globally? So MindSphere provides a space for developers to actually sell the applications globally. So MindSphere is an operating system for smart cities and you're building a developer community to create applications on it. What are some of the applications that you are targeting for the initial rollout? If you look at a smart city, we are looking at smart infrastructure. So there are three areas that we are particularly interested in. One obviously is in buildings because guess what? Buildings uses the most electricity in cities. And then you have mobility. People want to go more places but with what, using less time. And, and last but not least, definitely the overall energy system and air quality and so on. We are working on a concept called buildings that talk. So traditionally, a building only receives electricity and, and consumes. So we are building a smart building that actually can tell the grid what, how much electricity I need, when I, do I need not less, and so on. Uh, but having said that, the biggest payback we see is in smart mobility. We have done a study through our Center of Competence in London that shows that there is a payback of 20 times. When you think about the capital cost to make some of these smart city technologies a reality using MindSphere as a platform, sensors and other related infrastructure, how do you propose cities finance this type of infrastructure to make this a reality? We certainly need government direction and perhaps uh, initial efforts by the government to fund certain projects. And in Hong Kong, I think we are very fortunate that, that the government is following through with the smart city blueprint, with what we call proof of concepts, and, and, and that's been done. But then how do you go to the next level, the scaling up? We, we firmly believe that's where the private sector comes in. So maybe in the next phase, it will be more about what we call the public-private partnership. Uh, which brings a, an element of not only risk sharing, obviously it's risk sharing, but also I think the private sector can bring in market elements. How do we generate value out of all these concepts? Uh, truly then you will have a long-term sustainable business uh, and long-term sustainable solutions. And one of the things you've done to act as a catalyst here in Hong Kong at the Science Technology Park is the Smart City Digital Hub, an accelerator to get applications going on the MindSphere platform. What was the rationale at Siemens to build this Smart City Digital Hub here? We came here for one reason. There's this is a big ecosystem of like-minded companies, small and big. The diversity is great. And then coupled with the financing and the support that the Science Park is getting from the government. So it has been a wonderful experience for us.